Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 160. Day, day, three, 3160. Three is to signify the fact that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 160. We are in the process of solving the problems from the practice test that you will find at the very end of the book. Very end of the book, practice test number two. And today we'll do the very last problem, the ultimate problem. Before we get going, yesterday, as we were doing question number 24, we came across the word penultimate. We did yesterday, we did the penultimate problem which simply means second to the last. It's just a very fancy way of saying it's not the last one, but it is the second to the last. Number 24, of course, is the second to the last because there are only 25. It, is, it was the penultimate problem. In case you're interested in learning that word, in case you're interested in improving your vocabulary, you, oh, actually, I don't have to look it up because I already done the work ahead of time. Uh, you will find this word on day number 11 in our vocabulary lessons. Just, just in the search box, just type in GRE vocabulary words GRE vocabulary words, day 11, watch that video and learn the word. Penultimate, along with it, you'll learn some other words, words that will help you improve your vocabulary and therefore help you get a better score in the verbal part. Because that is what kills most people in the verbal portion. If you do not have decent vocabulary, you are done. You must know, if not, if, if, not, if you do not have a very smart vocabulary, a very comprehensive vocabulary, then at the very least you must put in some effort to learn the words that tend to appear on the GRE repeatedly, over and over again. There are some words that they are that, that are favorite, that, that, that are their favorite, and they they appear more often than the others. And you learn those words from this series of vocabulary words uh, on my on my channel. Enough of the set. Question number 25 it simply says what is the length what is the length of the diagonal of a rectangle that has a width of 5 and a perimeter of 34? So there are two conditions we have to fulfill. We have to have a rectangle where the length has to be, or rather the width. The width has to be 5, the width has to be 5, and the perimeter, perimeter we are told, let's call it P, has to be 34. And the question is, what is the length of the diagonal? This is what we are looking for, D. Do you understand? Let's get going, shall we? Let's get going. How do we find how do we find the perimeter? The perimeter is simply perimeter is simply this is length, this is length, this is width, and this is width. So perimeter is simply length plus length plus width plus width, which is simply two times length plus width. With me so far? Let's substitute what we know. We know perimeter is 34, let's put it here. Two times length plus width. Length plus width, which we know is five. Let's put it in here. Open the parentheses, we get 2 times L, 2 times 5, which is 10, and that has to equal 34. Subtract 10 from both sides. If we subtract 10 from both sides, we find, we find, let, let's continue here, we find that 2 times L, if we subtract 10 from both sides, 2 times L is equals 24, and L in turn will equal 12, and that's it. Oh, actually, that's not it. We have to find the diagonal. That's not it. That's, that's, that's only half the battle. So now we know the length is 12. That's it. That part is done. Okay, we are done with this thing, or we are going to raise this thing? We, are, we know length is 12. Let's find the diagonal, shall we? Let's, let's redraw this thing on the top here. Length we just found was 12. Width was given to us, which was 5. Is the diagonal that we are interested in finding, D. Let's call this triangle. Let's, let's give this vertices name P, Q, R, and S. And let's look at triangle. Let's look at triangle P, P, R, and S. Do you notice anything? And what I mean by that is that we could, of course, very easily apply the Pythagorean theorem and do it out. It's not that difficult, which is simply 5 squared. The length, the diagonal squared, diagonal squared will simply be 5 squared plus 12 squared, and if you want to go, if you want to go this route, it's fine, there's nothing wrong with it. 25 plus 144 
which is 169, it's not, it's not going to take that much time, it's not that difficult, 169, and therefore d is simply the square root of 169, and it is equal to 30, there you go, we're done, the diagonal is 30. It's very simple, very straightforward, and despite the fact that it was the very last question, uh, let me look at the percentile, because usually I have, despite the fact that it was the very last question, and yet, majority of the people had no trouble with it. Majority of the people had no trouble with it. 62% of the people got it right because it's very straightforward. So that's it. As far as the exam is concerned, as far as the exam is concerned, and as far as this question is concerned, we are done. All the rest of the video, if you want to watch it, if you can continue watching it. If not, then we are done. Okay? The rest of the stuff we're going to do is purely for learning purposes because I want you to get something out of it. Even though I, I, I admit it myself that even though this wasn't a lot of work, it did not take a lot of time, it only took five, five or ten seconds, but that five seconds, six seconds, seven seconds, whatever that you spent, was in fact a waste of time. Somebody who is sitting for GRE, the way I look at the world is that somebody who is about to sit for the GRE, and that person tells me proudly that he or she expects to get a decent score in math, given the fact that you are about to sit for the GRE, and given the fact that you just informed me that you expect to get a decent score in the GRE, then if I see you doing this work, that is actually a bad news. We should recognize right away, we should recognize right away that this is actually a 5, 12, 13 triangle. There are two triangles that are their favorite triangles. There's two first one here, there's two first one here, which you already know. The first triangle that is their favorite is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. It has to be right angle triangle, obviously. A 3, 4, 5 triangle is where 3, Three, two, two of the sides are 3 and 4, in which case the, the hypotenuse, in which case the hypotenuse would be 5. They appear on the exam all the time. They appear on the exam all the time. But the problem is that whenever 3, 4, 5 triangle appears, or for that matter 5, 12, 13 in most cases, they appear incognito. They appear incognito, which is why I have my vocabulary thing in my hand here, because I'm going to quickly tell you which day we learn it. What does incognito mean? These triangles appear. These triangles appear all the time in the exam, but in most cases they appear incognito. They appear in disguise, and I'll tell you exactly what I mean by that in a second. Day number forty-two. Just type in one more time vocabulary, GRE vocabulary words. Day third, day forty-two, and learn that word incognito, in disguise. For example, can you tell me what will be the missing missing side of this triangle here? Uh, how about uh, Give me a second, just thinking. What will be the missing side here? We could sit there and waste waste our time. That's that's wrong. That should have been 21, not 20. That should have been 21. We could sit here and waste our time, or we could ask ourselves, whenever you come some, come across something like this in the exam, the very first thing you should ask yourself is, is it a 345 triangle incognito? Is it a 345 triangle? in disguise. And in a 3, 4, 5 triangle, we know hypotenuse has to be 5. Well, this is 35. 35 is simply 7 times 5. Isn't it? This is 21. 21. Well, ah, 21. 21 is simply 7 times 3. Well, if it is, if this side, if this side is 7 times 3 and this side is 7 times 5, this would have to be 7 times 4. The missing side would have to be 7 times 4. 28. We don't have to do any work. But as you can see, it came incognito. If somebody tells you the one side is 21, the other side is 35, and a right angle triangle was the missing side, to sit there and do 21 squared and 35 squared, add the two up and take the square root of it, you could go that route and eventually find that it's 28, but that was not necessary. They come incognito. Here's another one. Here's another example. Here's another example. A simple one. Okay, a very simple example. How about, how about, uh, What's the third side? What's the hypotenuse? Again, it's very straightforward. It is simply 3 times 2 times root 5. Are you able to see it? And that is simply 4 times 2 times root 5. And therefore, the missing side must be 5 times 2 times root 5. There you go. The missing side is 
10 root 5. This was 6 root 5, that was 8 root 5, so missing side must be 10 root 5. We don't have to do any work here. Understand? Not only you'll end up wasting a lot of time trying to figure out the missing side by, by, by calculator, but at the end when you finish, calculator is going to give you the answers in decimal. And what if the answer choices are written in this form? What if the answer choices are given as 10 root 5? Do you understand? The second most favorite, second favorite triangle that they have that appears in the exam all the time is this one what you're looking at. It's called, it is called a 5, 12, 13 triangle. A 5, 12, 13 triangle. Where the three sides in the are in the ratio of 5 to 12 to 13. But they are in this ratio. In other words, okay, so we're done with this problem. That's it. The answer was 13. We found the answer, that says 62%, we're done with it, okay? Let's look at this part here. So, 5, 12, 13 triangle is where one side is 5, the other side is 12, and the missing side, the missing side is 13, 5, 12, 13. But it's not going to appear as 5, 12, 13 most of the time. So here's another, here's one example, but keep in mind, it has to be right angle triangle. So how much is the how much is the missing side? How much is the missing side if this side instead of five happens to be fifteen and this side happens to be thirty-six? Very simple. Fifteen is simply three times five. Twelve thirty-six is simply three times twelve, and therefore the missing side must be thirteen times three times thirteen. The missing side is thirty-nine. The missing side is thirty-nine. And you can verify that. You can actually verify it. You can you do out your calculator. I'm not going to do it here, do it here but if you verify it, 15 squared, whatever it is, figure out what that is. 36 squared, figure out what that is. Add them up, whatever it happens to be. And you, when you'll see that, when you, when you figure out, you'll get 225 plus 1296, which is 1521. And if you take a square root of it, you'll find that it is, in fact, 39. The, the hypotenuse squared, let's call it C squared, this is your c squared, and therefore c is the square root of that quantity. And if you were to do it out, you will see that it is in fact 39. Do you understand? Let's do one more. One last one, and then we'll, then we'll call it the end. So you're given a triangle. We are given a triangle. We are told that it is a right angle triangle. We are told the problem tells us it's a right angle triangle. And how does it tell us? Because there is a symbol here. The question is, what is the missing side if this side happens to be 35 times root 7? And this side happens to be 84 times root 7. Before you freak out, before you freak out, ask yourself, is it a 3-4-5 triangle? Definitely not. It's not a 3-4-5 triangle because it, in order for it to be 3-4-5 triangle, I see this quantity which is a multiple of 5, but it doesn't appear at the hypotenuse. So this is not, this is a multiple of 4. That is not a multiple of 3. That's not a multiple of 3. This is a multiple of 4. So it cannot possibly be 3-4-5. So it may be 5, 12, 13. Let's find out, shall we? 5, 12, 13. Ah, that's not a multiple of 5, but that is a multiple of 5. It is simply 5 times 7 times root 7. 5 times 7 is 35. Well, if it is 5 times 7, then this better be 5, 12, 13. This better be 12 times 7. Is 12 times 7 84? The answer is yes. 12 times 7 is indeed 84. Which means, which means the missing side must have been, actually in my notes it was the other way around. In my notes it was the other way around, but it's too late now. Missing side must be 13 times 7, which is 91 root 7. In my notes I had the other way around. Let's start again. This, this, is, what, this is what I had intended to do. This is what I intended to do, in which case you will ask yourself, is this a multiple of 13? 5, 12, 13. If this is multiple of, if this is 5, then this missing side would have to be 12 times something, but this would have to be 13 times. So if this is 5 times 7, is this quantity 91, 13 times 7? Well, let's find out. 13 times 7, 13 times 10 is, 13 times 10 is 70, and 13, and 10 times 7 is 70, and 3 times 7 is 21. Yes, it is. There you go. That's the missing side, which, which means it is, it is, it is 13 times 7, which means this has to be 12 times 7. 12 times 7 root 7. Do you understand? That's it. Let's, let's, call it, let's, call, let's call it the end of the video. Actually, one quick, one quick digression at the end. It's not technically a digression because we're not continuing the topic, any uh, old topic. Old topic is all finished. This is just a note. 
the last note at the end. It just came to my mind. It just came to my mind, and since it came to my mind, I just want to share with you. Uh, when when people are dealing with prime numbers with my clients, I find over and over again that there are some numbers that people have trouble recognizing as prime numbers. As prime numbers, there are some particular one, and one of those number actually is this one. When people see 91, they are unable to see that that's a prime number. That is a prime number. When you come across a number and you're asking yourself, is this a prime number? Well, the only way you can find out is you have to start dividing by prime prime num prime factors. Is it divisible by 2? The answer is no, it's not divisible by 2 because it's an odd number. The next prime number is 3. Is it divisible by 3? How do we know if the number is divisible by 3? The number is divisible by 3 if the sum of the number, sum of the digits, sum of the digits divisible by 3. Here, sum of the digits is going to be 10, and of course 10 is not divisible by 3. So it's not divisible by 3, obviously. Is it divisible by 5? Obviously not. It doesn't end in a 0 or a 5. And before you jump to a conclusion that 91 is a prime number, you have to continue. Is it divisible by 7? Well, let's find out, shall we? Is it divisible by 7? Let's divide by 7. How many 7 in a 9? 9 has 1 7. 9 has 1 7. After we take away 7 from the 9, we have a remainder of 2. What happens to the 2? 2 goes and joins the 1, becomes 21, and 21 has 3 7. There you go. 91 is not a prime number. 91 is not a prime number. It is, in fact, a product of two prime numbers, 7 and 13. And because it is a product of two other numbers, other than other than one, obviously, it is not a prime number. Do you understand? Just so you keep in mind. And you should be able to see, without doing all this mumbo jumbo, you should be able to see that 91 is simply, 91 is simply 70 plus 21. 70 is 10 times 7, and that is 3 times 7, which is why it is 13 times 7. Right there. What other numbers? Are there any others that uh, that uh, that people find uh, uh, tr people have trouble recognizing? 91 was one. Another one I usually see is 87. I don't know why people in their haste people in their haste end up saying uh, saying that 81 is a prime number. 87 is a prime number. 87 is not prime numbers. Let's find out, shall we? Again, the same thing. Take the 87 and start dividing by prime factors. The very first one is two. Two is a prime number. Obviously, this is, not a, this is not a multiple of 2 because it's not an even number. The next one, of course, is 3. It's very simple. And how do you find if a number is divisible by 3? Well, add up the digits. Add up the digits. 8 plus 7 is 15. And since 15 is divisible by 3, this number is divisible by 3. It is not a prime number. It's a multiple of 3. Let's divide by 3, shall we? It is not a prime number. We don't have to do this part to know that it's not a prime number. Just do it. 8 plus, 8 plus 7 is 15. Whatever it is, is, is some number times 3. It's a multiple of 3. It's not a prime number. How many 3's does 8 have? 8 has 2 3's. 2 3's are 6. After we take away 6 from the 8, we have a remainder of 2. What happens to the 2? 2 goes and joins a 7 and becomes 27. And 27 has 9. 9 3's. As you can clearly see, 87 is simply 29 times 3. Of course, 87 is made up of 29 threes because if you were to add one more three, we'll get a 90, which is 30 threes. If you understand that 90 is simply 30 threes, if 90 is 30 threes, if you were to take one three from that, you'll end up with 29 threes, which is 90 minus three, which is 87. Do you understand? Here's the other one, if you're interested. Same situation. People don't test for this thing and they just they just jump to conclusion. Here's another one. 57. 57 cannot be a prime number for the same reason. 57 is the sum of the digits is 12. If the sum of the digits is 12, which is divisible by 3. 57 is divisible by 3. And how many 3's? Are you able to see right away? Are you able to see or not that everybody can see that 60 is a multiple of 3, isn't it? 60 is a multiple of 3 is 23's. 60 is made up of 23's. 23's are 60. What would happen if you would take away 1 3 from it? If you take away 1, from th one 3 from it, you will end up with 19 3's. And 19 threes would be 57. If 20 threes are 60, then if you take away one three from it, then 19 threes are 57. This is this is the language. This is how we say it. 19, 19 threes are 57. This is how we speak. 19 threes are 20, 57. 20, 
23s are 60, which is what this is. 19 threes are 57. So, or you could just divide it 57 divided by 3. How many threes does 5 have? 5 has 1 3. After we take our 3 from the 5, we have a remainder of 2. What happens to the 2? 2 goes and joins up 7, becomes 27, and 27 has 9 3. As you can see, it's not a prime number. And by the same logic, and by the same logic, if you were to go one more, here's another one, which is also a multiple of 3. It's a multiple of 3 because 5 plus 1 is 6. And 6, of course, is divisible by 3. 51 is not a prime number. 51 is not a prime number. And you shouldn't have to be able, you shouldn't have to do all this work to see that because if you were to add 9 to it, if you were to add 9 to 51, we'll end up with 60. 60 is 23. 60 is 23. So if you were to subtract 9 from it, which is the same as subtracting 3 threes. If you subtract 3 threes from 20 threes, you will end up with 17 threes. And 17 threes should be 51. 17 threes. 17 threes are 51. 17 threes are 51. As we can see here, how many how many 5 does 3 have? How many 3's does 5 have? 5 has 1 3. How many 3's does 5 have? Answer is 5 only has 1 3. After we take away 3 from the 5, we have a remainder of 2. What happens to the 2? 2 goes and joins the 1 and becomes 21. And 21 has 7 3's. As you can see clearly. Right there. But these are basic things that you shouldn't have to think about it in the exam, you shouldn't have to do it out like this in a babyish way, it is something we have to understand it, we have to master these concepts before we sit for the exam. Do you understand? We are done with this section, tomorrow on day number 61 we will begin the next section in this exam, I don't know what page number it is on but wherever it is, we will begin the next section or I can actually tell you where the next section is going to begin, most likely the very next page. Yes, the very next page. page number 489 or 488 if you like. We are on page 487. Tomorrow when we meet we'll begin with on page 488 where we find the next math section and we'll work on that one. Okay? Bye now.